Hello and welcome. Uh, we're here inside the Lenovo Customer Center in North Carolina. And this is Gavin along with my good friend. Gavin. And his Lee. good friend, Lee. Lee. Yeah, yeah. Glad to have you guys here today. Uh, there's a special occasion and a reason that we're here having to do with the 25th birthday of ThinkPad, which is October 5th, uh, meaning it was born, guys, October 5th, 1992. Uh, we also have a cast of thousands with us. We have the <laughs> quarter century crew, the gang of five. We're, we're open to suggestions for their name. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna be opening uh, a special sort of trunk of wonders today. Uh, that Kevin has put together for us, and we wanted to share it. Uh, Kevin Lee and I are all roughly two ThinkPads old, and the gang here is roughly one ThinkPad old each, <laughs> and so we wanted to share it with them and, uh, and see what happens. But uh, I thought we should start by, by asking around the room mm -hmm. and just wondering, what were you guys doing on October 5th, 1992? Kev? Uh, I was in my last semester of college, so probably doing homework and fighting with my college girlfriend or something. Yeah. <laughs> yet again, yet again. <laughs> Lee, how about you? Uh, in October 1992, I was working for a small PC dealership in Greensboro, North Carolina. So and I was actually witness to the evolution of First ThinkPad. Not bad. And I, for me, I was a little underemployed, doing a little freelance writing, living with my bandmates, and very much living hand to mouth. <laughs> and, now, and now it's with some trepidation that I turn this way. And <laughs> let me see, who shall we start with? Let's start with Hector. October 15th, 1992, I was three years old. Um, I was in Cali, Colombia, so probably just learning Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Long before me, buddy. Let's see, let's go out of order. Mm, Zan, where were you on October 5th, 1992? October 5th, 1992. I was just a few months old, probably spilling baby food on myself. Or not. Maybe, I don't know, can you even eat baby food when you're no, like three? I think so. No. I'm probably, probably having baby food spilled on me <laughs> by other people, yeah. So you were a fairly accomplished guy at that I point. was, yes, fine motor skills. All right, yeah. Waringa, how about you? I was a toddler in Kenya, um, about to turn one in December, so very happy baby. So yes. only vague memories of the ThinkPad launch? You know, <laughs> very, very vividly. I'm kidding, no, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> not so much. Disha, how about you? Uh, I was in the womb. <laughs> I was not born until three months later, so I very vividly remember yeah, the ThinkPad yeah. launch. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Special <laughs> kind of yeah, sense. Yeah, my mom put the TV right in front of her stomach and was yeah. like blasting it right there. That's all I remember. <laughs> the globe changed for you. <laughs> and Brian, how about you? You're the last probably uh, rocking out to Vanilla Ice and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. At what age, son? <laughs> Three. <laughs> yeah, the Mutant, the Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, that was the year Home Alone 2 came out. We had done our mm. research. Uh, what else, 92 was the Barcelona Olympics. Charles Barkley elbowed that Angolan guy during the Olympics. Ooh. So it was a huge year. Grunge was still cold kicking it at yeah. the time. Um, anyway, we've, we've dwelt on that. <laughs> sorry, sorry, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure that was later. It was on the charts. Um, and, uh, but that, that brings us very, very uh, unceremoniously to this, this tub in front of Kevin. Kev, what's in there? We're not, we usually we unbox things, you and right. me, but today we're unpacking. Uh, exactly. These are all already <laughs> unboxed. And so uh, I don't actually have any of the ThinkPads from the first two years in here. Uh, because I did collect a few things from various folks here and there and mostly stuff that I had at home or in drawers in my desk But I wanted to keep it real like things that it actually like I had experienced or that sure. fell into my hands You know in the actual time frame, so I don't personally have a uh, ThinkPad from 92 or 93 So we're actually gonna start with one from 94. All right Huge spoiler alert there, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Half the audience yeah. just left. Boom, they, they wanted to say. Come on, open her up. All right, All right here we go. Yeah. All right. Has this ever been opened? It has, it has. So, Ooh. Ooh. so we're going to start with this, and then I'm going to bring out something again in uh, a little bit. So let's get rid of this sticky note, because we know whose it is. Um, My mother's. So, yeah. Yes, as a matter of fact. Um, when we were looking for ThinkPads to populate the historical display here in the customer center, uh, we didn't have any, you know, in our uh, immediate desks that were this age. And Lee was like, oh, I think I have one uh, that was originally my mom's. So just to give you guys some feedback or some uh, feedback is the wrong word, to give you some context on this. This was 1994. So this was really the second year of ThinkPad into the third year. Uh, and this was the first laptop in the world to ever have a CD-ROM. 
Oh. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, I don't have a paper clip with me, so I can't pop it out. Uh, but that looks super uh, light too. Yeah. It's a lightweight model. Um, you know, I can't remember exactly how much it weighed, but I'm fairly certain it's somewhere between six and seven pounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. My laptop is 2.4. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. But so, you know, we take people through these old things and kind of like, why was that even significant? And oh you really have to look at what it doesn't have, right? There's no USB. Uh, there's only a modem port. Uh, Ethernet existed, but you had to like use a PC card, but nobody had broadband or anything like that at home. We were probably five years away mm -hmm. from broadband in the United States. So to be able to like transport data, I mean, this thing probably shipped with like a maximum of like a five gig hard drive, if it was even that big. Wow. Uh, and that would have been hundreds <laughs> yeah. of dollars, like high hundreds of dollars for that five. That was your high end. Uh, and the ability to like transport data, 650 megabytes at a time on little plastic disks that it probably only cost $5 a piece at the time. Um, it's ridiculous now if you think about it. First it in the industry deal, with a CD drive. Right? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Still has a track point. Disha, though. feel free. Giving us. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, we'll, okay, I just come. held my axle carving. Yeah. So. so now, are you ready? I don't ready? know. Brace yeah. yourself. <laughs> Jim oh, time. It's so ugly. Oh. Hey. 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 That I just Ooh, bought for her, uh, yes. So like um, which is a cheap car, yeah, like thirty eight hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, like in our research, we realized duty. the original ThinkPad from ninety two uh, was in the marketing materials. It was aggressively priced at forty three fifty US yes. dollars. So uh, aggressively priced. Wow. What, what is forty three fifty in today's? So yeah, that's yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was nineteen ninety two. Yeah, workstation. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good stuff. There's no trackpad or anything on it, though. No, no. Those Very small screen. No such thing <laughs> so exists. <cute>. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely did not support CAD. That nope. was, so that was 94-ish, huh? Yeah, yep. that wow. was 1994. Yep. And wow. I'll go a little bit out of historical order because I, I did find something else that I wanted to show you guys here just relative to that whole issue of uh, storage. Original boxed option from IBM. No way. From the year 2000, the world's first commercially available, broad scale manufacturing, however you want to caveat that, um, memory key, memory stick, thumb drive. That's a USB you stick. Have a big it's in the box, it's in the box. The year, I believe it was the year 2000. Um, I remember the year And if I'm not mistaken, it was, it was about 40 to $45. Anybody want to guess how big it was? Five megabytes. Five. <laughs> close. Eight megabytes. <laughs> Eight megabytes. <laughs> Eight megabytes. <laughs> Um, You're not bad, though. That's yeah. pretty, yeah, good guess. Guess. pretty like, shrewd guess. It needed, it needed, a, it needed a, uh, a manual. Yes. Well, it's in, it's in multiple wow. languages. So, sure. it, uh, yeah, so that's oh 28 God. pages. Uh, and then section A, section B, section C, For section what it's D. Worth, we were full grown adults. Drivers. Time. We yes. were not. And the idiots. drivers. I mean, we, you <laughs> had to laugh. install the drivers? Apparently so. Is it like 28 oh pages God. of instructions? Yes. Can you even store the instructions, the text instructions <laughs> on the drive? Yeah, well, like two well mind you, uh, those were multilingual instructions. Okay. So. okay. Yeah. <laughs> to give you some, <laughs> some context, this is a few years older, but this is a five megabyte hard drive. So the idea of having eight meg that you could carry around in your pocket compared to Kevin, does that have or Lee, does that have a bomb attached to it? Um, it? It's <laughs> actually, believe it or not, not, funny. This was advanced <laughs> technology at the time when it was in a, in a PC XT. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine made a clock out of it for me later. But <laughs> so to put eight meg in your pocket was a big deal back then sure. because again, you just before it was something this big, not yeah. long before it was something this big, you had to you right, need a yeah. backpack for your right. five megs. And, yeah. and bear in mind, that was the year 2000, that was 1994. So to be able to have portable pieces of information you could trade, now they were, you couldn't burn it yourself yet. It was right. a few years yeah. before that ever yeah. happened. Uh, but you know, to be able to have like corporate sales materials or multimedia that you could pass out to people at 650 megs at a time, sure, that was a pretty big, no, there were no the, USB ports. That was nice. He's looking for the ports. Looking for <laughs> Sorry. He makes an interesting point. That <laughs> Your eBay purchase ended yeah. badly, Sam. Yeah. USB ports. The timeline is not forgiving. And so <laughs> he thought he had it all figured out on eBay. <laughs> we'll keep them coming. All right, let's go. Back all right. in the deep in the right. box. What else you got in there? All right, here we go. I'm going to go to a <laughs> couple a twofer. from, uh, we'll do a little twofer here. Um, as we talk about something from 1998 and 1999. 
Oh, so now we're getting um, into smaller. modern yeah. tech. <laughs> okay, so That's much, much awesome. smaller. Portable DVD players? Uh, <laughs> you, well, you, one could be forgiven for thinking that. Uh, so this was a Japan-only model. Uh, that Tyler. had that yeah exactly that did a couple <laughs> things that we have not ever done before or since just because the realities of making something this ultra portable at the time uh, came with some uh, considerations or trade-offs if you will uh, so I'll start just by pointing out that uh, while I don't have the actual weight it is relatively thin and light if it does if, if it does it's honey I shrunk the uh, yeah. Yeah. think bad 700 like kind of baby. yeah this is like barely bigger than my kids 3ds yeah uh, well uh, so the thinkpad 235 uh, the 2 series was like the original sort of ultra small. Yeah, you remember X, those? Kind of the predecessor to X, right? Exactly. Uh, so the things that uh, were necessary to uh, make this work is because the main communication uh, mechanisms at the time were uh, modem or ethernet or if we work for IBM token ring. Yep. So if you would pick that up for me, I'm gonna grab. Right. Uh, you wanna open it or just pick it up? Anyone know what token ring yeah. is? Yeah. No, no. no. Whoa, you used to write about it. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have to do with Lord of the Rings or something? It, it, was, it, yeah, it was a Tolkien thing. The Tolkien yeah. ring. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a cross marketing right. tie-in yeah. at the time. I think. Okay, now some of these various cards and uh, add-ons here are from a different era, but I bring them out to show you that as this thing existed, as I got it in my hands, it had no way to connect to anything, right? There's no built-in modem. There's no built-in ethernet. There's no, it was years before wireless, it's a rock. right? <laughs> so it did, however, have three card slots, right? So as I carried this thing around at one point. God, it must be real super handy yep. when you're just walking the halls and you just uh, start fumbling for your cards. So PC <laughs> card, Whoa. right? So you could pop that out. That was a uh, Ethernet card. And that wasn't uh, habit forming at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? So I could have that puppy in there. Uh, I never did that. Ever. So without the cards in it, nothing. it would connect to nothing. It had no modem, no Ethernet, uh, no nothing. Uh, the connectors, which are huge and massive, did have one interesting property, right? So that's an RJ45, just like right. you use for mm -hmm. Ethernet. So you could convert that into the classic old school token ring, but if you needed an extension cord, there's no male or female to token ring connectors. So, you just so turn them they're all 180 dudes. degrees and they can plug right. into one another. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Uh, the technical, <laughs> scientific, and not coincidentally biological term for that is a hermaphroditic connector. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna just move on to yeah. this. <laughs> 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 We're just going to move right. I don't even want to hand these over to the guy. <laughs> I feel like there's going to be an HR complaint coming. Uh, and what else? There you go. Oh, I'll let Lee talk about that one in a minute. Uh, this was magic at the time. This was a combo modem and Ethernet card, and it had telephone in and out. This is a Lenovo produced reproduction. Uh, but in case you ever wondered, this is the original ThinkPad. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, so I, the corporate motto of IBM was think, right? So prior to the original ThinkPad, every IBM computer model just had a number, like the, the blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? And that's how they were known. And that was the re their original intention for the ThinkPad. And uh -huh. somebody in a meeting said, okay, well, we all carry these things around, like IBM engineers for... So those were given out oh, to yeah. people when they got jobs at IBM. And oh, you yeah. you could walk to any IBM office in the world and say, my ThinkPad needs a refill, can you give me, and this is the one I had when I, you know, like this one I had, uh, was working in the dealership. So you could walk into the IBM office and say, I need a refill, and they would just hand you one. So that was sort of the reach out. To put into it. Yeah, so, like so this was like what all the engineers were supposed to keep in their pocket. The to, I didn't know that. To uh, write their ideas down. But it's kind of cool as an employee, you know, yep. here yeah. modern times at Lenovo. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that when you get there, there's a, there's something that's insinuated there, which mm -hmm. is that you're someone with good ideas, and you should keep track of them yeah. and contribute. Yep. So to me, that's something very old school corporate, you know, that you hear about, yeah. like the the familial kind of aspects of companies and things like that. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of cool. And that's where the name came from. So I'm going to pass this around. No, no that's, that's not. About a, the that's paper, not a laptop. About the paper it is, okay. and you, it is. It is badly hurt. I dropped it and broke you it. Come to, like come two over years to ago. One, Do you use that with like one hand? Yeah, pretty like much. It. Now, interestingly enough, it's not called a ThinkPad. 
It's the IBM Palm Top, Top PC 110. It looks like uh, a little Game Boy. It is yeah. really, <laughs> again, really close to Game Boy size, a yeah. 2DS. Yeah. And I, I like type with your pinky. Yeah, I, I asked the godfather the of ThinkPad why it wasn't called a ThinkPad, and he said, I don't know. It doesn't have a track point. It uh, does. Sort of. It does have oh, a sorry, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has the stick. The point was really just to have something as honestly underpowered as it was. It was like a 486. SLC, yeah, SL. I think you could get it up to maybe like 12 megs of RAM or 16 oh megs of RAM or something. Uh, and you could basically only use like uh, compact flash for storage. Yeah. When I first got this years and years and years ago from a guy in IBM Japan, I took it and I installed Windows 95 on it. And, but I also had run it with its original software. So it was basically kind of a PDA. Right, oh. you could do okay. some very basic like word processing and note taking, but it would keep all your contacts and things like that. You know, it was just kind of a pocket computer to see if they could do it. Uh, but the most interesting thing about the design of this is we were talking about the other card where you had to plug your modem in, yeah. and then if you're and you could have it go back out to your phone, so it would keep the circuit completed, and that way if your phone rang with a computer plugged into it, the phone would still ring and you'd know somebody was calling. This had something uh, very close to that. So there was your modem, little pop-out port in the back. And so if you were dialed in doing, you know, whatever you could do online in 1990, uh, when did this thing come out? It's three? Ninety. No. Uh, sorry, I see I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get one of the other. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, 1995, okay. right? So 1995. There were online services. So say you were sitting at home and you weren't actually using it, you weren't dialed in, but you had your phone plugged in. You see here on the front, uh, Gav, right, that that says uh, that there's a phone. Ask me or tell me. Uh, the well, that's, <laughs> I'm asking you to verify. This is a high test for him too, right? <laughs> one was the speaker and one was the microphone. But what you could do is, you see that has like the on hook headset thing? Yeah. Is if the phone rang while this thing was plugged in, you could literally pick it up slide that answer the phone and With use it as a phone headset. Are you serious? Stop. Really? <laughs> what? Ah. what? I understand people would say, new phone, who is this? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what they said? Ahoy. <laughs> Back in those days, yeah, we yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. lost yeah. their minds. Yeah. All right, so next. All right, so just our, not our final, but for the moment, diversion away from actual laptop technology. Um, this is something, the chip card, that was only sold in Japan. Um, <laughs> And so, as you saw Chip from that card. tiny little uh, thing, you, there, were, there was not much else uh, that would let you store your yeah. phone numbers and contacts. Before and Before Palm Pilot and, the, yeah, yeah, and all that stuff. Before all right? that, right? So yeah, people Palm were Pilot. looking to kind of digitize their day planners, right? So that's what this was. Uh, it was essentially a digital day planner. Um, it did apparently actually include the ability to, to uh, upload some maps to it. Uh, but what it was was just a double height uh, PC card uh, that popped open uh, and had a little keypad so you could <laughs> keep all what? your contacts. I thought it was a little slide in yeah. hard drive. Yeah. yeah, and so what you did was you kept it in your slot, in your or in the PC card slot in your computer, uh, and then you would use your calendar software, whatever you were using at the time, to sync to it. So it would contain all your phone numbers and all your calendar entries and everything. And then when you went out for a meeting, you could grab this. And I don't have one, but they had a little leather case for it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then Were people you could, super showy with it, like I, oh, I was, well, yeah, I got like a meeting my little Star talk. Trek communicator. It looks like fanny pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one could do dialing too, correct? Well yeah, done. and it that was like the, a razor. That was this cool. is where it gets showy. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you know, you would look up your meeting and go like, I have a you know three o'clock with Tanaka San or whatever, uh, <laughs> but oh, I'm running late. So you would run over to a payphone and put in your little payphone card, payphone and it would have Tanaka San's number on it, and that's a speaker. And so you would hold it up to the phone and tap it, and it would beep 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 beep, beep, beep do the tones for dialing the number for you. Really? Oh, that's, oh, wow. that's actually that kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't follow any the of that, number, but it sounds <laughs> <laughs> The number is on there, and you bring it to the payphone. The payphone is your connection to the world, but that's the yeah, number. Yeah, you didn't have cell phones. Damn it. So yeah. it, it saves you what? You're it saves you typing it in? Yeah, it saves like, you right? looking yeah. at the number and yeah. typing it. That's big. See, you oh, lost it like payphones <laughs> in general. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. Even Those are boxes that have phones. I've seen Doctor Who. It's not Doctor Who. It's not Doctor Who. It's not Doctor Who. 
Yeah. Well, that is kind of cool. That's like that's ambient computing, right? You're just walking like, around and you, yeah, right? Yeah. Your information is stored there, and you plug into a portal of like yeah. larger compute power, and you're like, hey, here I am. Plug me into the larger world. Yeah. That's so cool, you, you, you raise a very good point because all this modern discussion that we have about the Connectivity. ubiquitous nature sure. of computing and it, yeah. we keep it in our watch, right. and of course now it's like you know call Zan, right? right. And I'm Around. connected, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't have the technology to solve the problem in the same way, but yeah. your point, 20 something years ago, we were at least thinking about it. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. So it's exactly. thousands of contacts, the ability to auto dial and your calendar is yeah. on there. And that was, you know, mind blowing technology yeah. right. for like the day. Collaborative workspace, right? Like, so you go up and you got like a big, you know, mm -hmm. fancy touchscreen, a lot of input mm -hmm. and I don't know what well, you plug your phone or your small laptop into it. And it's the equivalent of the pay phone. Yeah. So the notion of ubiquitous computing nice. reminds me of like how for every mm. major breakthrough we have in tech, there's about a thousand minor inconveniences that get solved along yeah. the way, right? right? right. Exactly. Well, if you think about it, here's how I think about it, is that 20 years ago, we were making technology that let people walk around with technology all day. Mm -hmm. right. You know, that actually solved like real world business sure. or social problems. We're good. Right. Okay, right. you ready? Next one. Okay, all right, all next right. one. Um, just an evolution uh, that came about uh, two years after the last ones that we showed you. Uh, so 240, yep. So this was a uh, Japan only uh, S30. I think this is an S31, so this is the second generation. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> object of much contention and jealousy within the company, yep. by the way, for those who had yep. the Japan model. Right? Yeah. Um, no, this is actually an S30, so this is the first generation. Piano but black. Yeah, and that was the special edition. They wow. we made black. yep. They made it in Japan with the regular black, but this was the special this, edition. It could be none blacker. <laughs> <laughs> none more black. Yeah, none more black. Sorry. And did you pay a premium um, for the glossy one? What's that? Yeah. Did you pay a premium for the glossy uh, one? I actually got this after the fact. I, I have never actually used one of these. Um, I was, uh, in fact, working yes. for IBM <laughs> at, at the time. He's actually never been here before today, so I don't know where he's getting all these stories. You questions. paid for your first computer oh. like just. <laughs> two or three years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, Seriously. It, I don't, I, I bought <laughs> one in junior high school, or my parents bought one for me, mm -hmm. and then That's maybe in college, no. yeah. but no. Still no. I, no, no I, I've, I've never really <laughs> bought So never mind, don't ask him about yeah, costs. Yeah, I've That's never not, really bought many. That's my, like Kevin's thing, it's cost. It's the great thing about working for IBM and Lenovo for 20 years, and I've never really had to buy laptops, so. Anyway, uh, except for my wife. Sorry. But, um, Every, for everyone else, it's aggressively priced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think this one probably uh, would have a reasonable claim. Uh, I'll pass it over to you guys and let you see what you think. Uh, but if, if this existed with modern technology, uh, it had wireless, it had Ethernet, um, it did have a rotational hard drive. It was before SSDs. Yep. Uh, it had you know the modern form factor of memory. So the screen's a little small, but I think from a usability perspective, it doesn't have a touchpad because that was before we were making those. Uh, so you're out of luck the, there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so notice some some things that you'd recognize. Yep. Uh, for example, blue inner key. Um, and this one had a, a little uh, oh. a sort of usability feature. Is if you look right here on top of the battery, um, this would what? flip down to give you a little kick wow. up. That's kind of cool, actually. The Eleven degree stand. angle yeah. that is considered good oh. for uh, ergonomics. <laughs> yeah. Yep. When we um, go back and watch this video later, we're gonna, me and the gang, the mm -hmm. gang of five, wow. we're gonna do a drinking game around the word usability. Yeah. <laughs> kind of cool. It's gonna be fun. Well, you ought to have buzzword bingo, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for sure. That's awesome. Any ability, yeah. really. But yeah, that's nice. All the, I, I have to say, I wish I'd have grown up in Japan only, because mm -hmm. I could have seen all this. <laughs> OIJ. Yeah. yeah. Only in that's Japan. Because cool. believe it or not, at one point, the whole notion of making something super small and super thin uh, with the trade-offs that you had to make for battery life at the time right. uh, weren't that attractive to people outside Japan. You know, the, the market mm -hmm. research we had at the time, people were like, no, make it big and heavy. We need it to last, you know, whatever was standard at the time, eight hours, six hours. Big right. and heavy. You know, oh that was God. the first <laughs> one that really kind of hit that barrier of a fully functional computer, mm -hmm. wireless connectivity, of course, was, mm -hmm. you know, growing very quickly. It was the first time you really got to cheat in meetings and like mm. surround your boss with people who <laughs> knew yeah. more than he did, right? Uh, but that was really, you know, kind of that the first thoroughly modern ThinkPad to my mind, right? Yeah. Um, Can you imagine not being able to IM in meetings? Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. What? Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> well, because before wireless, how do you, how you know, who, the, you the person who was presenting uh, would get, you know, get there and they, you know, if they were like four ethernet cables in the mm -hmm. table, 
you know, maybe like the big boss and the person who was presenting got the Ethernet cables to plug in. Everybody else would just sit in the back of the room taking notes. Did you and at least have like Microsoft Paint? You're passing notes on the, on the <laughs> ThinkPad. Yeah. You're passing yeah. around. Dude, modern where, day dude. Where like... all the snarky comments about the presenter go? Yeah, exactly. What did you do with those? Who is this guy? Yeah. Yeah. When I think about the meaning of the 25 years for mm -hmm. ThinkPad, I think a lot about, you know, David Hill always talked about purposeful design and yeah. mm -hmm. iterative design. Yeah. But like, we, we've talked a lot today about small things that either there were improvements or breakthroughs in the techno the underlying technology. Right. But what, what did it mean to have many of the same people working on these over the years? Like Nato-san and Nito-san? Nito san yeah. yeah. And David Hill and others. Like, it seems like a big part of the deal is your problem solving. Um, that must have been a big, a big deal. Well, I mean, probably a hundred reasons you could mention that it's overall been a good thing, but the one thing I would throw out as like just sort of a blanket placeholder for all that is just not reinventing the wheel, Yeah. right? You know, knowing that when we came up against a problem, be like, that is a variation of this thing we did three years ago. Let's go yeah. find those guys, look up their notes, figure out what they did. Right. Um, and so you can definitely see echoes of things like, uh, I don't think it's too much of a stretch. You look at like the, the, uh, uh, the butterfly keyboard from 1995 and what we started doing with the yoga keyboards. Mm -hmm. Just the whole notion that you could somehow mechanically actuate a keyboard and do something to it to make the usability uh, better, uh, that was not a new idea. So let's what's do left? this. Oh, so, what's left? All right. A big <laughs> box. <laughs> right. You better have a big finish for us, Kev. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> yeah. otherwise we'll have since, to since we're, on the, since we're on the topic, <laughs> right. the next best, best thing right here. That's not a laptop, is it? Uh, it is not. Okay, good. I, I was a little worried. <laughs> so I, I'll be perfectly honest. This is um, now 15 years old. Uh, this was made for the ThinkPad 10th anniversary. We made a few thousand of these only in Japan, uh, it is a 65% plastic scale model of the ThinkPad 701C <laughs> so with the butterfly that. keyboard. You're really taunting us. Yeah, so it was a toy <laughs> that was given out in a paper box and you had to put it together yourself with screws oh, and everything. Oh, you had to assemble like a build your own. Yeah. Yeah. It was a build your own uh, thing. And like Tamiyama model. Yeah, model. exactly. The, uh, <laughs> the plastic, however, is kind of warped over time. So I actually had to take it apart in order to get it closed. So I'm only gonna be able to open it once. <laughs> so I open it this way. Yeah. Sure. Make, so, it yeah, uh, make it work, make it yeah. happen. Because I've got to like take it back apart and I don't know, put some, some oil or something in it. Oh. Um, Oh, that's the butterfly keyboard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. Uh, but yeah, that is a plastic model. Oh, the display model still kit. works on it. Yeah. <laughs> a monochrome. Uh, very impressive. Yeah. Very impressive. Uh, one of the cool things that they static. thought of is the reason they decided on like the 65% scale uh, was once they did all the math, that actually, uh, it's just a little piece of plastic over a piece of paper, but it was uh, sort of as a giveaway, it's a photo frame. So that is like the exact size of an international metric photo print, like a whatever the metric equivalent of like a four by five uh, photo print <laughs> is. So it was made to be a um, made to be a picture frame. Well, who would you put a picture of in there? Naito's son. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, me and Naito's son. <laughs> yep, yep. So that's uh, so. That's cute. Imagine something uh, thirty five percent bigger than that, and that's what the seven hundred C was. Uh, and that was 1995. Wow. All right, so let's, uh, I got, Next. I have two here uh, from, let's go, no, actually I just have one. So let me get that out. I've got some other, oh. yep, I got some other stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of other stuff that I need to get out with this. Okay, we're gonna have a, it's possible this video will be longer than our unboxing videos at the end of the oh, day. I'm sure even it is. With the depth oh, I'm not even done yet. It's hard to we say. Some more stuff. This is a big trunk. I can't wait All for right. intermission oh, again? in this video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're at 49 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God bless the editors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so here there we go. Is there a child in there? Or is All it right. just the light? Shh, here we go. All right. So I'm going to tell you guys oh. what all of this stuff is for in just a minute. Is that tri tripod? Is that a Wally -E action figure? <laughs> <laughs> now, let so me. Uh, back to the days when not everything was built in. Mm. It's kind of. It's like all the pieces of like a sniper gun. Oops. I have to say that the past, the 1990s, yeah. seemed like a dark age of slow oh, wow. internet connections Wait, and heavy things. Oh, is that well, you wondered why the old laptop nope. bags well, are so sort of big. Oh. This is why. Oh. Because like to, to actually take that stuff with you and 
to well, we connect. We used to carry trunks like this to and from work every day as well. <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> Kevin didn't tell you that. running out of space here. Yeah, uh, it sucks. A lot of back problems back there. <laughs> yep. Backpacks weren't invented Look at yet. you now. I mean, your life is just so easy. I guess <laughs> well, that's the real Kevin. message and here today, kids. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bring it. It's got to bring it. All right, life so let me get all this lined <laughs> up here. Uh, oh, so the reason I show you all you of this is to show here. that there were once a lot of standards <laughs> <laughs> for laptops. Because you think about it now, even though I guess there is still some utility for maybe in a desktop or like a gaming system, you might have a Blu-ray drive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's pretty much it. Like there's one standard for opticals. There's no like removable media anymore. Floppies and all of the different uh, uh, successors to that <laughs> are gone. And then it's USB. Now we're kind of moving from USB A drives to USB C, mm. but other than that, uh, but so this was all from the year 2000, and there were so many standards out there, mm -hmm. we had no idea it was going to win. And so this is like the most egregious example. Um, <laughs> That's a laptop. Yes, there were smaller <laughs> ones, but the entire series that we produced from the years 2000, 2001 ish. Right, the original T series, T20, 21, 22, 23, 24, X equivalents, A equivalents, they all had something that was known as the Ultra Bay 2000. Right, yeah. and that's what all of these are, are Ultra Bay 2000. Now, this is an A series, this is an A30, I believe, or an A31. Could you do look. anything yeah. on that thing without, like without the upsell? Right yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. So most of them only had one. Can you imagine? But this was. <laughs> The, uh, the one model that had two of them, wow. right? So what you would do in, let's just say, one of these that only had one drive is you'd have a floppy, and when you needed to use the floppy, you'd swap the floppy in. When you needed to use a CD or later to burn a DVD or use a DVD, you would swap in this drive, oh my God. right? This <laughs> laptop happened to have one of each, so you could keep the floppy over here. Um, this is why there was a lot of IT support around. You worked <laughs> in a big company at that time, too. Now, now you don't yeah. know, you're not sure where your IT support is. You, you need them yeah. occasionally. But back then, imagine trying to sort this out. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you were not you know, technically inclined. I'm not speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, this one, one who was not technically inclined. So I, I have you, to believe yeah. there's nothing left in the case now, in the trunk here. Oh, no, there's more. Oh, there's more. Oh. 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 This is dangerous. Oh, this is way worse than I thought. I'm not kidding. Guys, How much does not, that weigh? Not arm day. Oh, good lord! I'd have to. That's yeah, that's seven point eight pounds. It's it's more than that. that. If you drop this, you're that's not even more the heaviest. That's not even the heaviest. Does that have an ADP on it? <laughs> <laughs> it's got all the latest stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. All right, and this I is from also I think two thousand. So no, that's from two thousand three. <laughs> so this is the next year. Uh, so we had done away with the ultra port, and this was one of our ultra Whoa. thin and light systems. Oh, that's a dock? Uh, yes. Oh, and again, okay. <laughs> this was, uh, I carried this as my personal machine. This is an X31. Wait, did that one have a dock attached or was that just uh, the you, machine? Yeah, that, you could also dock that. So can you it's imagine? It's not in a dock now, though? It is not in a dock, no. God. It is that <laughs> weight without being docked. Oh, my God. And it's aggressively priced. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's amazing. Um, you could, like, use this. But so and that you was. You get your Japanese yeah. characters. Yeah, that was an ultra out, portable machine for, I carried, this was my so personal machine. I carried this uh, for work in 2002 or 2003 probably is when I carried this one. Uh, when I was actually living and in, in, in Japan and working for IBM Japan. I graduated eighth grade. <laughs> nice. No, fifth grade, sorry. You might have done career night at your place. Yeah. So take us, take us through the, uh, the uh, uh, what do we call that, the ultra base, Lee? I believe it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is speaking of things that are docked while uh, carried on the road. This was sort of that concept. If you want to strap it in here, connect it through the docking connector, and now you had obviously a lot more ports. Sure. You had the ability. Kevin and I were looking at this earlier to actually add another battery in the chamber. Mm -hmm. I love our. It's very secure. Yeah. So you could have the battery on the bottom. Add another battery in here mm -hmm. and have <laughs> dual batteries. Two batteries. Or yeah. if this battery, if you'd been using this all day and this battery was running low, you could have your backup battery in the bottom of that thing charging on your desk and then, and then get back to your desk and swap them out. What yeah. are all those ports on the back? <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. This is just adorable to Serial, use. Serial, PGA, <laughs> parallel, modem, Ethernet. PS2, is this mouse only for green or is it dual? Mouse. Only. Mouse only. So there's the, the mm -hmm. power connector. So 
You could charge while you're away. What kind of stuff could you guys have in your brains if you didn't have all this in there? Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the main question. There is an ultra bay ask. here. So all the, the options you were talking about there. And of course, it's the latch to let it out. But mm -hmm. uh, the other thing too, I've always liked, is we had that fascination with the oh, yeah. the power oh, keyboard yeah. angle. Yeah. Yeah. Right the feet. Wild. The ergonomics. <laughs> the first time I ever heard the word ergonomic was in the 90s doing freelance writing for IBM. And I was like, what the hell is ergonomic? <laughs> just running up the, main, the, the drinking game it? later now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So, the I mean, usability was so outstanding. Well, the whole thing is, oh. I mean, hard drive. Yeah. you've ever heard, you know, Naito-san or any of the senior engineers in Yokohama talk, they wanted the PC to disappear in front of you and let you work. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the whole thing is if the keyboard is at a oh, funny geez. angle, mm. you're thinking about how terrible the keyboard is. Sure. So the little it's feet were important uh, to the design to let you just uh, type and do your yeah. work, so. Uh, you'll see a lot of feet over the years. Yeah. Let's see what else we got in here. But again, there's a relentlessness to the design, all the evolution that I love. Yes. It's like you're always looking for something. There's something that could be better. Yeah. What's kind of back to your question earlier when you say like, what's the advantage of having 25 years of continuity? That's it. Is they remember not just where they've gone, but where they want to go, and it's just a consistent focus. So. Yeah. Yeah. And these are just some random things that I found that I wanted to show you guys. This was never an official. Um, <laughs> Option. This was like a giveaway. Yeah, it's a calculator you made like a ThinkPad. Plug in. That's amazing. Thinkulator. Yeah. But you could you could also plug it into your uh, ThinkPad and use it as an external ten key. Huh. Oh, so it was just oh. a, a it was just a little tchotchke giveaway. <laughs> so um, and I, I'll admit I did not look this up and I don't remember which models this fit on. Uh, but some of the very earliest ones. People didn't like the track points. Uh, you know, in the very early days, they were more used to a track ball. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was a track ball that had a springy mechanism here that could clip on to the edge of the ThinkPad <laughs> so that you could, uh, and it would plug into the mouse port. Did it have at least but like the clicking cool. buttons, left, yeah. right, click? Uh, yeah, I think left, right, and maybe even three buttons. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I haven't been able to find much information on this. Hey, Kev, uh, one side note. This has a BS button on it. Backspace. Oh. <laughs> yes. yes. That's the special button we have. For yes, Kevin. in case you were... I don't know a lot about technology. In case you were wondering. Uh, there was some way I thought to take this thing. There we go. Still yeah, it come apart. Kind of disappointing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Lunar key and a little cute. adorable red thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, this was actually made for us by Logitech. Uh, and it has the routing for the cable. So you could swap the cable to either side to use it left-handed or, uh, or right-handed. It's actually bought this, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can make Tons that of people did. I like, and, uh, I got something I no idea. weird like this at one point. Yeah. This is thinking. what we needed last time we were in Japan, Kevin. Yeah, it could have been this with us. <laughs> so, it was uh, really hot. Oh, okay. This is the high-tech yeah. stuff right here. Well, this is actually not a ThinkPad fan, but uh, just a giveaway that I had. You know, yeah. IBM e-business. <laughs> So is, I forget his name, the famous Japanese uh, actor uh, at the time who uh, Bill was Murray? in our commercials. <laughs> that was I mean, me. I think that matters. All right, good. next. All right. And so let's see, what, what year are we up to now? Uh, I um, think, I don't know. I blacked out a little while yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. The picnic table? <laughs> yep, so let's, uh, let's do <laughs> these. Uh, yep, you grab those. I'm gonna grab this. Now, I gotta be honest, guys. We yep. got a group of people in their 20s here, yep. and, and the video's been going for maybe three, three and a half hours, yep. and they're still engaged. And yeah. 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 All this hogwash about yeah. the young people's attention spans has turned out to not be true. Indeed. It's all I about the story. I have looked at my phone once. I know. Yeah, see, now really the viewers, happens. the viewers on YouTube yeah, or Facebook or wherever right now, maybe are troubled. Yeah. Yeah. There have been no threats of tasers or anything. Yeah. <laughs> There's only been one uh, selfie. One. <laughs> yeah. If there was a selfie right. over there, I'm let me see the Z series. All over again. Uh, the Z. I'm gonna take the Z. a picture of them next time I open the box. Thank you. Just uh, want to give a shout out to our crew who's still at it, <laughs> and they're gonna be having some heavy editing duties after this. Yeah, they are. We've already started yeah, the game, but anyway. Uh, so this is actually like a, a, a semi-finished prototype. We never did make it with it, with his exact shine, uh, but you know, people always ask why all ThinkPads were black. Uh, I don't think this was the first was not the first one to not be black, uh, but it was one of the earliest ones. This is from <laughs> okay. uh, this is from 2000. Tell you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an unfinished prototype with a whole bunch of like not customer ship level stickers cool. on it. Uh, so it was like an unfinished uh, titanium, but I kept it because it was kind of a proto type uh, model. That cool. doesn't block the wi the Wi-Fi signal. Uh, they signal? address that by doing it differently. What it was wi actually on the sides. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was right. Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah, right. Totally As a matter of fact, <laughs> just he was listening and knew how to No, no yeah, no, I'm just messing. Right? So, for, so did they put the antennas on the side or something? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. yeah. And the widescreen was one of the first things that talked talk us about people walking around their systems with 
a PC held in their hands so they didn't lose their wire wireless signal because it was hard back then also. Yeah. yeah. So that's where things like the roll cage and things like that came from was what we learned from having the Z60 gotcha. wide screen. Yeah. Let's figure it out. Yep. That, that was in fact the first to ever have that roll cage. The X300 <laughs> was the like... Uh, it was 2008. 2008. It was a, it was a milestone. If you're a ThinkPad nerd, yeah. you definitely know that one. Yeah. And just because you work here doesn't make you a ThinkPad nerd, obviously. Yeah. I so do not know ThinkPad. Certainly Pad some of our right. some of our friends, some yeah. of our viewers, our Lenovo Insiders friends yeah. will be like, oh yeah, and then that, and then that. They've been, been waiting for us to get to this one. But it was, it, was, it, yeah. it, was, it made magazine covers. I guess that's what, yeah. you know, we remember that. I mean, it's probably the oldest ThinkPad that if, you know, when you hold this, probably the oldest one that you would look at and go, eh, I could probably still use this, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, <laughs> because, yeah, it was relatively modern weight, relatively, you know, modern everything. Uh, uh, it's a little dated technology-wise. It is nine years old. Sure. Uh, but this, I uh, wanted to show you guys, is full of, like, stickers and, yeah. and not final uh, yeah. because <laughs> it was a pre-production prototype. Oh uh, and it is what became the X300. Cool. Uh, but just, uh, I don't know that we've ever talked about this publicly. But Don't tell me, Japan only? No, no. Well, it's yeah. nine years after the fact, so I figure it's okay. Uh, I know it has been mentioned. Uh, I just cool. want you to look at what the name of it that was screened on it. I showed you the S30, which the S series up to that point had been the most ultra-portable ThinkPad we'd ever done. So this is a very rare early uh, uh, development model that is... That is an X300, but it is screened as an S70. So, so that was, during kinda. development, uh, we had thought that the name of it might be the S70. And uh, that it's got a, changed to become the X300. It is thin and light, I'll give you that, and nine years really later. This is really kind of, in a yeah. lot of minds, this is the first the thing that looks and feels like an X1 carbon. It's under three pounds. How many, was this 20? Three millimeters. I can't the thickness, but it was relatively Fairly thin. thin. But it was a watershed inch. moment, clearly, yeah. for, for design. Yeah. For uh, yeah. Yeah. But it I mean, was also one, it was also um, mm -hmm. you know it, that was two and a half years after mm -hmm. after Lenovo acquired the PC company from IBM. Yep. So it was also a, a moment of sort of a proving ground yep. um, for the yep. for the modern era, right? Yeah. Yep. So it doesn't uh, look bad though at all. I, I yeah, realized no, I skipped pretty, the head a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was 2005, 2006. Uh, that was 2008, but I forgot 2007. Uh, there's oh, one. Yeah, I know there's exactly. One more in here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me. Uh, I've still got here. a friend with back problems from this next one. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no. It's not the one yeah, I'm thinking of. the one you're thinking of. Sorry. Uh, so I, I showed corrected. you the little um, uh, model, uh, plastic model of the 700C that was the, the 10th anniversary. Uh, we did do that other one that I passed around, the X30. Mm -hmm. uh, we did do in 2002 a, a 10th anniversary edition of that. Again, that was only in Japan. Uh, it was a shiny black model and it was numbered, you know, limited edition. Uh, and so that was the 10th anniversary edition. Uh, but then there was a 15th anniversary edition that was sold worldwide. Uh, anybody ever seen a ThinkPad Reserve edition? It's, uh, it's a Pinot Noir. Ooh. Wow. Is that a case or is that the actual? What? That's a it case. It was made that way. That's it. No. Yeah. It was Why? born this way. Why was Actually, it brown? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> so leather. this it's was leather. Okay. a 15th anniversary special ThinkPad. Uh, with a handmade leather cover uh, from, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> French leather. I was going to go from Italy. Uh, I was thinking Italy with the also. Richard Sapper. Yeah. Italian or French leather, I can't remember. Made or at least designed, I think also made by a uh, classic <laughs> Japanese <laughs> saddle making Whatever company. Really? Yes. Was this still mil spec tested? Uh, that's a really good question. It would have been maybe before, I'm not sure. Predates mil spec. Um, wow. We made 5,000 of them and they were? $5,000. $5,000. You got it. You, those were $5,000 mm -hmm. for that one? Yep. Just, yep. Wow. But it was meant to be five years, you didn't worry about anything. Yeah. Right? All your warranty, everything was covered. <laughs> yeah, it's but so, uh, so pretty. That's still $5,000. You can hold it over your head yeah, when it rains. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> lot to like. Multi purpose. And again, yeah. to use Lee's line yep. from earlier, I think we sold dozens of those as well. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Did you could bitch sell five thousand? <laughs> I there's a reason know. he has. One. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> lastly, <laughs> lastly, but not leastly, uh, we're going to end on something from 2008 
Because I, I figure it at better some be good point or another. I don't think leastly is a word, to yes. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured that everybody here had seen at least everything from the last five years. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. It's all around. We've got them on display. You've used them. Uh, but so I wanted to show, as the last thing here, to the best of my knowledge, uh, the biggest, thickest, and heaviest ThinkPad we ever made. Bigger than which that was last one. Uh, in this particular configuration, not counting the roughly two pound power supply that you had to carry mm. to power this thing, this is 11 pounds. 11? 11 Why pounds. Why would you ever want to yeah. carry that around? Uh, because it was a workstation. And you could also put legs on it and a tablecloth and have a picnic table. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather put wheels uh, on it and drive it to work. Right. So at the time this came out, it had some very unique things. It was the absolute highest end in processor that Intel made. It uh, had, as I'll show you, a built-in, I don't think the pen is with it. It had a built-in pen. It had a built-in uh, drawing tablet into the, uh, uh, the bezel because it was meant for doing workstation work. And it was Good a 17-inch screen. But the thing that truly made it a beast and made it unique was that if that's not enough screen for you to be doing your Photoshop work no, or whatever. No, no. Does it slide out? No. Why? 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 That's where you put all your palettes in Photoshop. Yeah. That's where you, you know, can edit mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. But this was the, the absolute cream of the crop of, of 2008. How yep. much was it? Oh Lord! Too much. Yeah, <laughs> several dollars. Yeah, it was aggressively yeah. priced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably five thousand dollars plus at the high end. Yeah, uh, but there was nothing else like it at the time. It uh, it actually had dual rotating hard drives, right? That was just at the time that SSDs were starting to come out. But yeah. you could put like whatever the biggest thing at the time was, probably five hundred gigs or something. Um, you could actually rate it like a workstation because it was a mobile yeah. workstation. It had two full-sized mobile hard drives. Uh, DVD, blue. I may have even had Blu-ray on this one. I don't remember. Are you going to pass this one around? <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't now, I'm not, for I'm not suggesting it. <laughs> this particular one that you probably could see it on camera uh, is is one of the few that we could find of these that were still around. And somehow, somehow the the keyboard got removed from it. But uh, so it doesn't have a keyboard, guys. <laughs> Industrial uh, chic now. <laughs> so it's actually lighter yeah, slightly exactly. yeah. than it would have been in its original configuration. I, so instead of 11 pounds, pass it. it's 10.7. Oh, yeah. Should I sign a waiver for yeah. this? Yeah, we used to have these in the gym as well. Make sure your posture is good when you pick it up. Kev, is that is that it? Is that everything that's in there? Also ADP on that. Yep, <laughs> that's everything. That's, that's, that's everything. Thanks well, for sharing uh, your trunk. Even sit on my lap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're still with us at this point, if not, <laughs> yeah. sweet dreams. And uh, thanks to our panelists, our gang of five. Um, and I hope everybody Playing had a lot of fun. With the old guys. <laughs> happy, happy birthday to the ThinkPad, uh, and thanks to all of you for uh, for following along the way. So cheers and take care. <laughs>